Vekoma is a Dutch ride manufacturer located in the Netherlands known for their wide variety of roller coasters. They are founded in 1926 and at this point in time have 392 operating roller coasters around the world. And that list continues to grow every single year. Vekoma is on an upward trajectory. For the longest time, they are known for their off-the-shelf models like the Boomerang and the SLC, which were innovative at the time, but quickly became outdated, were known for being rough, uncomfortable experiences. So within the past 10 years especially, they've gone through this reimagined of their portfolio. They've since debuted many new types of rides, all of which have been very smooth and comfortable. In this video, I'm going to be ranking the 15 best roller coasters that Vekoma has produced that I have experienced. This includes old Vekoma and new Vekoma. And because they have so many different types of rides out there, I found this to be an especially hard list to put together. Comparing some of these ride types is just not easy because of how fundamentally different they are. One thing that especially made this list hard to put together is that many of Vekoma's best roller coasters come from Disney. Vekoma is the Walt Disney Disney company's supplier of choice when it comes to roller coasters. So together with Walt Disney Imagineering, they've produced some incredible rides all around the world. Really well-themed experiences that many of the regional parks just can't top. So what I've done here is I've made sure to include both traditional thrill rides that are just pure roller coasters through and through, and still include those rides that are more immersive, full package experiences. So there will be a mix, and depending on what is most important to you, you may or may not agree with this, but I've done my best, so let's see how they all stack up. At the number 15 spot is currently what is the only operating suspended thrill coaster that Vekoma has produced, Hal Zuberkopf at Trips Drill. This is their prototype for this model, and there's actually a new one currently being constructed in Ireland, which looks to be even better. This is like their spiritual successor to the SLC, but it doesn't feel at all like an SLC. Really, what it feels like is a more thrilling version of their suspended family coaster. Rides like Dragonflyer or Cannon. So you have a steeper drop, three inversions, and a really smooth ride experience. This ride in particular is also really fun because it crosses over a few times with their family boomerang coaster which runs right underneath it but i think for me the reason why i didn't place this higher is because i would like to have seen a bit more forces to it like there are a few moments where it tried to give you airtime but didn't quite get there there was only like one real moment of positive force which did incite a little bit of a gray out but i wish there was more of that but it's still really fun and i fully anticipate there to be many more of these coming in the future at the number 14 spot we have rock and roller coaster at disney's hollywood studios this is the first ride to make this list that uses their mk 1200 design Back in the day, Vekoma used track that had the running rails on the inside, whereas currently it's on the outside. It was actually originally based off of Arrow's track, and sometimes that'd mean that you wouldn't get as smooth of a ride experience. Rock and Roller Coaster is one of three rides to use this exact same layout, the others being Avengers Assemble Flight Force at Walt Disney Studios and Express Platform 13 at Wallaby Holland. Both those rides are fun, but this one is definitely the best of the three. It also has a similar sister coaster at Disneyland Paris called Hyperspace Mountain. Same sort of idea with an indoor roller coaster in the dark that goes upside down three times and I went back and forth on whether to include hyperspace mountain or rock and roller coaster on this list but I decided on rock and roller coaster because I think it delivers an overall better ride experience in terms of a full package as the most cohesive theme like hyperspace mountain it is not the smoothest but still a really exciting experience and to this day is the only roller coaster at the Walt Disney World Resort to go upside down let's head to Dollywood for our number 13 attraction Big Bear Mountain this is a new for 2023 LIM triple launch family coaster. It's located in the back of the park in Wildwood Grove and stretches all throughout this land, really using the terrain. I'd ridden many of their smaller family coasters and this just felt like that dialed up to 11. But it's so fun with all its sweeping turns passing under a waterfall into this back like spaghetti bowl section. Still very much for kids as a very low height requirement, but something that the enthusiasts will enjoy as well. It very much feels like Vekoma's next generation mine train. But speaking of mine trains, let's go to one of their best at Disneyland Paris, Big Thunder Mountain. Now, of course, everyone knows the Big Thunder Mountains at all the different Disney parks. Out of the ones that I have experienced, this one is by far the best. In this case, the ride is located on an island in the center of Frontierland. It's so elaborately themed, some really great effects. Starts off as kind of your traditional mine train passing through many different turns. But what makes this ride so cool is it ends with this crazy drop at the end where you pass underground and you just keep going. The drop feels way bigger than you expect. It comes out of nowhere and it's just a really epic finale. But it is not my favorite mine train. That goes to Colorado Adventure at Fantasia Land. This ride is freaking crazy. As three lift hills sends you through all sorts of different theming elements, much like Big Thunder Mountain. But while Big Thunder Mountain has a strong ending, Colorado Adventure has a really strong middle section. You enter this massive room, traveling around this pretty intense helix. The whole ride feels out of control, way stronger than your 
average mine train. It was a total surprise to me the first time I rode it, and every time I've been on it, I walk away and I'm like, wow, that ride is like actually really, really good. We always joke when we visit Fantasia Land, it's like they have the best of each different ride model, and that especially holds true for Colorado Adventure. Fantastic mine train. So let's enter our top 10, starting first with Abyssus and Energylandia. This is a Vacoma shockwave, over 4,000 feet of track, four inversions, and two launches. It is a huge ride located in the back of the park in the Aqualantis section. Really nice variety of elements, but like what I mentioned with Hal Zuberkoff, I would like to have seen a bit stronger forces here. The beginning of the ride especially I found to be kind of underwhelming. I honestly think you could have just started with the second launch and the ride would have been just as strong. But luckily the second half of the ride is really enjoyable and I think makes up for the beginning. Let's head back to the Walt Disney World Resort and talk about Expedition Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom. This brilliant attraction came together in 2006 and was actually the first of a coma coaster to feature rails that were on the outside of the track instead of the inside. When it made its debut, it was the most expensive roller coaster ever built. The mountain it sits on is almost 200 feet tall, but the maximum height of the track itself is about 112 feet. It's got a really sizable drop, a really cool switch track where you reach a dead end and go backwards. Everyone loves that indoor reverse helix. The visuals are amazing and it's so iconic. I wouldn't be surprised if this is like the most written roller coaster of all time. It's so well known around the world and is just a really strong attraction for everyone. For the number 8 attraction, we're going back to Energylandia to talk about Formula. When this ride made its debut in 2016, I feel like it was really the attraction that put Vacoma on the map as far as, hey, we're back, we're doing thrill coasters, but we're doing them right. They are smooth and enjoyable. We are not the same company that we were before. And they've really started to catch on. This is an awesome ride. Even though it's older than Abyssus, I actually think it's a stronger attraction. Yes, it's nowhere near as long, but in my opinion, it's punchier. I think it has great pacing and is more rewritable. Now, at our number seven spot, we have the great nor'easter at Maury's Piers of Acoma SLC. What? Taylor, I thought you said that SLCs were terrible. Well, they are. They're not fun at all. Except for this one. So what happened here? Maury's peers worked with Vacoma to do a full retracking. They brought in new trains, gave it a completely new experience. It didn't even feel like the same ride that it was before. It was now so smooth that, quote, your grandma could ride it. And I can testify, this ride does not feel anything like any other SLC I've ever done. And really what it proves is that the SLC layout is good. It just didn't have great track and trains. But once you improve that, it's actually a really strong coaster. This is my favorite ride at Maury's Piers. I thought it was better than some B&M inverts I'd done. I never thought I would say that I'd run back in line to do an SLC again, but here I was doing it with Great Nor'easter. In my opinion, this ride absolutely deserves the number seven spot. Go out and ride it. You'll be surprised too. For number six, we're heading back to Walt Disney World for Tron Light Cycle Run. This ride made its long-awaited debut at the Magic Kingdom earlier this year and is an exact clone of Tron at Shanghai Disneyland. Tron starts off with a really exciting launch, shooting you out of a show building. You have this wide sweeping turn under this amazing canopy. The visuals are unbelievable. And then you have some world-class effects thanks to Walt Disney Imagineering inside this main show building. There are two downsides with Tron though. One is a little short. I would love to have seen at least like an extra helix at the end. I actually think that would have really helped improve the ride experience. And then I thought that the mid-course brake runs hit a little hard, kind of killed some of the momentum. But this ride has so much going for it that it more than made up for it. So what do we have next? It's Aftershock and Stuntfall, two of our giant inverted boomerangs. But what? Taylor, you said that boomerangs suck. Well, yes, usually. But Vacoma made a handful of giant inverted boomerangs, and they are just absolutely insane. These things are almost 200 feet tall, feature a vertical ascent up backwards, release you to where you're plummeting down to the ground, through a cobra roll and a vertical loop, and then you do it all again backwards. These rides are smooth, intense, and kind of scary. Like, these towers are so huge, it's a very intimidating structure. It's it's rare that my heart starts really pounding before getting on a roller coaster, but this is definitely one where that happens. Coming in at number four is the only Vacoma Wildcat to make its debut. It's Phonix at Far Up Summerland in Denmark. From what I've gathered, this is like the benchmark for what new Vacoma thrill coasters will be like. And if that's the case, we're all in for a treat because Phonix is awesome. It is so much fun. Great mix of airtime, inversions, not overly intense, but still really good forces. It's got an awesome drop that's like hanging stall as your first inversion. You also fly through the station over some outer banks and it just keeps that pace from start to finish. In my opinion though, it is not quite as good as Let Coaster at Legendia in Poland. 
This is Phonix, but way more intense. You take this crazy twisted drop and immediately gray out as you're flying into this first inversion. It is so forceful, it's probably too much for most people, but I love it. I can't imagine we're gonna see many more rides like this. I think that Vacoma realizes it's too much, but enthusiasts who love positive g-forces are really gonna enjoy this thing. That's why it was by far my favorite Vacoma in Poland. I honestly thought about putting this at the number one spot. It's really good, but I think technologically and in terms of a full package experience, there are a couple rides that I'd put over this. Starting first with Fly at Fantasia Land. This is our next generation flying coaster, currently the only one of its kind in the world, and what an unreal ride experience this is. Vacoma completely reimagined the flying coaster and combined with Fantasia Land's creativity building this elaborately themed Rookberg experience around the coaster just makes this one of the most awe-inspiring memorable experiences you'll ever have on a ride. Unlike Let Coaster or some of the flying coasters by B&M, this ride isn't anywhere near as intense but it does have airtime. If you thought airtime on a flying coaster was impossible, think again. They absolutely knocked it out of the park with this one. But I did not put it at the number one spot. I thought about it, but instead, I have placed Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind as Vacoma's number one coaster. This opened last year at Epcot at the Walt Disney World Resort, and was the first of its kind attraction to use this controllable spin, where it essentially points you in different directions throughout the experience, so it's very much a story-driven ride. You're joining the Guardians to stop this bad guy who's stolen a cosmic generator, you board your escape pods, launch backwards, and go on this crazy long ride experience in the dark, flying past extremely high definition screens to forward the story. There's onboard audio with six different songs you can choose from, and it really is a ride for everyone. I don't know a single person who's gotten off Cosmic Rewind and hasn't been like, wow, that was amazing. Like their flying coaster, I hope that we see more out there one day. So there you have it, the top 15 roller coasters by Vacoma. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Vacoma has so many rides located all around the world, so there's still plenty that I haven't experienced yet. I can't wait to see how this list changes over time. Vacoma has such a bright future ahead. Their innovations have been out of this world and maybe more so than any other ride manufacturer. I can't wait to see what they do next. So let me know down in the comments below, what are your favorite roller coasters that you've experienced by Vacoma? Do you agree with this list? Do you think there's anything I left out? And of course, stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios and I'll see you next time.